and uh, we're hopping in here with a quick video. I wanted to give you guys an example on this pretty cool car we're working on today. It's a 2016 Range Rover Sport SBR. Uh, now this car specifically came with a lot of carbon fiber options which is really uh, neat and unique but uh, only after four or five years of ownership the, the carbon fiber finish on the hood was failing. The clear was delaminating from the, uh, the resin that they built the hood with. So the customer looked into getting a new hood and found out it was $8,000 for a brand new hood and he came to us uh, for our professional opinion and we were, were going to attempt a repair on this hood and we wanted to film the process and show you guys maybe you're experiencing the same problem or maybe you just think this is a cool car. I want to show you guys the process of how we're going to fix this. Come on in the paint shop here we're going to show you the process we're going through. Okay. So as you can see, uh, if you come in closer to the hood right here, we've already been sanding on it. And uh, what we found as we got into it was that we couldn't just sand out the specific spots where the clear coat was flaking off because it would, when we re-clear coated it, it would leave a gray area there and then the yes would be, rest would be yellow and be discolored. So if you come in closer right here, you can see how we're having to take really the whole top layer of this and systematically sand it off so that everything has this, uh, you know, uniform gray finish so that when we clear coat over it everything looks like it's supposed to it's extremely important when you're sanding on a carbon fiber finish with a top coat over it that you don't go too far down um, you have your dry carbon fiber material when this stuff's made and then there's typically a resin on top of it and there should be a clear coat on top of that to give it that uv protection so that this kind of stuff doesn't happen if you break through the uv clear coat if you break through the resin uh, and you start sanding on the carbon fiber, you're going to distort the weave in the carbon fiber. And when you clear coat it again, it's going to look all messed up. So you have to be very careful that you're just taking off enough of the bad looking stuff so we can put some fresh, clean clear coat over the top. Let's hop on real quick and talk about the tools that you're going to need uh, in order to do a repair like this. So obviously your general hand tools and stuff that we needed to take the hood off and do the disassembly on. It. But as far as the preparation and uh, refinishing portion goes, you're going to need a good dual action sander. Uh, this one has a vacuum built into it and it keeps things very clean and healthy uh, for the user, but not everybody has that. A normal dual action sander will do the trick. Um, then you're going to need an assortment of sandpaper. So what I'm sanding with right now is 220 grit, which is really aggressive, but we're trying to knock that top layer off uh, fast and uniformly, and then I'm going to step back up with a couple different grits. So I have 220 grit. I have 320 grit and 500 grit. Probably going to finish it off with 800 grit. And then you're also going to need some scuff pads like this. After you're done sanding it, we're going to come in and scuff it so it has a really good point. You can see I'm actually removing that top layer that was yellowing and getting down to a layer underneath that's not raw carbon fiber but it's the probably the resin that has not been yellowed by this top coat that was flaking off. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Anyway, while you're here, <clears throat> I got this thing all sanded down. Um, I got the top layer, the yellowing and the discolored layer off of there. Now I'm doing a nice wash to make sure we remove any greases and oils and I'm also scuffing it with a gray scuff pad to give it a really uniform finish for the paint process. but it's a pretty cool look. Um, the resin was flaking away at the edge of the white paint. So if you come in closer here, you can see where we actually had to sand away some of this white. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is first masking this off and recreating that line. And then we're gonna remove the masking tape and uh, 
re clear coat the whole thing. So as you can see, we have the center of the hood masked off. Um, so we have to come in and use this special tape here. It's uh, called fine line tape, and you put it right on the edge of where you're going to be uh, making that transition. And when you peel it off, this is very specific tape, so you get a really nice clean line when you peel it off. If you use a regular masking tape, it'll bleed underneath, and this uh, will not do that. When you lay the fine line tape down, you don't want to stick it inch by inch. You kind of want to pull uh, as long and straight of a line as you possibly can and line everything up. Just touch it to stop it where you want to like this. Then when you make your curves, you just want to follow them around and move the tape down out here. All right, now that we got the line all laid out, it's just barely tacked down. So you want to come back and make sure you get it pressed down really tight. Make sure it doesn't move once you had it perfect. So you lay out a stripe. So the first thing we're gonna go and throw on the hood over here is, uh, we call it blender. Um, it's actually like a clear solution with a um, little bit of a hardening agent in it. And we're gonna put that on before we put the color and it's gonna help us get a really clean line when we pull that tape off from the white to the carbon fiber. Okay, so the equipment we're using in the booth today, yeah, this is a SADA 5000 um, HVLP with a digital gauge on it. And the tip that's on it is a uh, WSB tip. So it's, this is actually intended specifically for the water base type paint that we're using. Uh, we're shooting PPG Enviro Base. And um, these cups are made by 33M. This is the PPS system, uh, the newly updated one. Alrighty, now that our blender has flashed off in the booth, um, it's time to put our first coat of color on. <clears throat> when you're doing a two-tone and you want to draw a clean line like that, your first coat of color, well, it's all of the color. You want to make sure it's as thin as possible, but the first coat, you really just want to make a dust coat because that's really what's going to make the difference when you pull that tape off and you're trying to leave that clean line. transparent you can see right through it but that's the base for when you peel that line off it's going to make it much cleaner Alrighty, I just want to make a point to you guys as, as to how important it is that you keep the paint really as thin as possible for multiple reasons. You don't want to use more than necessary. The stuff's expensive. And two, uh, it's very important to keep this line clean that the paint stays as thin as possible, especially with this waterborne paint, especially with this white waterborne paint. It has a balloony texture to it and you have to be really careful with it. So if you come in closer here, you can still see after my second coat, you can still see these lines through. and. Um, it's easy to get impatient and it's easy to just dump it on there. But if you do, your line's not gonna come out clean in the end. So we just gotta be patient and keep putting the light coats on. All right, guys, so it looks like we have our base coat on, we have our coverage, it's dry, and it's time to do that uh, fine line peel and reveal our line between the carbon fiber and the fresh white base coat. Okay, so again, it's very important when you're pulling this tape that you do it in a specific way. If you pull the tape up, you pull the tape this way, 
uh, you're not going to get as clean of a line. You want to do what's called a hard pull and pull it at the most sharp angle that you can get out of that tape. So basically directly backwards. So find our fine line here. And as you can see, I pull this hard directly back, just like this. You don't want to pull up like this. Make sure you're pulling directly back. Okay, so it's time to mix up our clear coat. Um, we're going to be using a PPG EnviroBase EC530. Uh, of course, we have all these fancy scales and equipment, but if you don't and you look on the side of the can, you can see what the mix ratio is. So this is three to one to one, three parts clear coat, one part hardener, one part reducer. So. guys it's clear coat time so uh, we're using the Iwata LS400 for this uh, for the clear coat application um, we're gonna put basically two and a half coats on the first coat I'm just gonna be kind of a check coat or a tack coat however you want to call it and then we're gonna go in and put two heavier flow coats on. so before we uh, shoot the clear coat on we're gonna use this tack rag and it's kind of a sticky rag and it's gonna pick up any little dust that might be on there and uh, give us a bigger Guys, I want to hop in real quick and just reiterate what I was talking about in the booth as far as when you're spraying and spraying evenly and uniformly and um, consistently. Uh, just a little diagram to show you guys what I'm talking about. So, especially when you're spraying clear, you have the high chance of running the clear. When you put too much on, it gets too wet and gravity just drags it down and puts runs in things. Best way to get a run out is not to put the run in. Um, so. One way to avoid that is spraying uniformly, walking the whole side of the car, as you saw in the hood, not kind of spraying patchy. So a diagram of that would be, say this is a panel of the car that you're working on right here, and you're gonna spray it, and it's too big for, you to, for your arm reach to go. So you have two choices. You can either walk the side of the car, or you can spray it in halves, which you'll see a lot of people do. So if you spray it in halves, um, you start right here, this is your first coat. Okay, one coat. Get to the other side of the car. Spray here. Two coats. What's that leave here? Three coats. So, this is where I talk about uniformity, especially when you're dealing with metallics when you're spraying color, pearls when you're spraying color. Um, if you're doing this business, it's going to look different right here where you got three coats. Um, maybe it will be hard to pick up, maybe it'll stand out like a sore thumb, it depends on what you're working with, but when you do clear, what's going to happen is going to be wetter here, and if it doesn't run, it's going to be smoother here than it was here and here. So your orange peel is not going to be uniform either. So this is why it's important to like develop those good habits and um, that kind of skill to make sure everything, every job you do comes out that uniform. Alright, so we're coming in for our second coat of clear. This is going to be a wetter blow coat. It's really going to start to look nice after this one, but if the camera comes in closer, you'll see it looks a little dry, it looks a little blotchy. That's okay, that's what I want for my first coat. the hood and then I start right here 
by the time I get to the middle, the clear is going to be a little dry and it's not going to have a clean look. So I'm going to reach over the hood, grab that wet wine, and pull it back this way.